Okay, back. Same song still playing. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and put this pile of airsoft goodness back together so we can get back on the field and keep on playing. Okay, first, I, well, first off, I already made sure that the shims and the bushings and the gears are how I took them out in the stock setup. I didn't do anything. Shimming video will be later on. So let me go ahead and put this back together. Put the spur down first. Sector gear. Okay. And then the bevel. Okay, now you're looking at it like, how do I get this reverse latch in there? Might have difficulty with the version 2's already. Version 7, it's not that complicated. So here you go. You have the axle, goes in this hole here. Like so. Okay, and you notice you have the spring here. So when you push on it, spring it like that. And actually it stays in place, you can shake the gearbox, it's not gonna jump out. So, that's good news. Here we go, let's put it back together. Okay, I always set the gears up like this, so you don't have the type of plate hit. If you have it like this and you try to do it, you're gonna cause problems, and when you close it down, you're gonna break this and or everything else. So let me go ahead and spin that back. Okay, now we have the piston. Gonna go ahead and drop that in. Cylinder head, make sure it's flush, flush. The air seal nozzle, it only fits one way. If you try to fit it like this, it's not gonna work. There you go, it fits that way. And the spring fits like that. And it all fits in there. Here we go, let's put it together. I'll show you a pretty simple trick. So when you drop this in here, and you put it in, kind of like the E90, you're like, how do you get to that? There's like no room. The trick is, hold it. You put the spring in last. Put it in last. Put it in like that. So let me go ahead and put everything else together. And I'll always leave this on the table. Don't lose it, otherwise you're never going to have it. Okay, grab the spring and spring guy, pop it in. Now the only downside for the M14 series is you do not have a piston or spring window like you do on the version 2 gearbox. Or the version 3 where you have a larger finger groove for the cylinder. I have small fingers, well not small but thin fingers, and usually like for a version 2 you can hold down, easy to go. But for a version 7s, it is difficult to when you put it back together that this, the spring will push on the piston and it'll go out of place. So if you upgrade your M14 a lot, what I do like on some of my other custom builds is actually cut a small notch here so I can position this and see the position of the piston. You can do that and if you want real quick just get a file, cut it out real quick, matter of minutes. It'll save you lots of time if you're working on M14s all the time. If you're doing this like just once in a while, just kind of tough it out and you'll figure it out. Let me go ahead and put this together. And what I'm going to do is kind of just press in and can't really see what's going on because it's sort of crazy compact. What you can do is press in like so and you can is you can press on here and make sure it's springy otherwise if it's not it's going to if it's off at an angle it won't slide correctly and evenly it'll be kind of bound up and I can double check and open it just to make sure let me go ahead and do that so you don't want to put in an aftermarket piston and then have it break on you. Okay, I was right. It was in the center, so that's good. Let me go ahead and put it back together. Okay. Oh, look at that. There's another way. There's two ways you can do it. Uh, but remember, when you put in a harder spring, it is more difficult to keep it from getting all crazy and bouncing out. Let me go ahead and put the screws back in. Okay, so remember, you have one, two, three, plate. 
and the motor cage screws. Okay. Okay, also make sure that the gears can move freely. If you can't do this with your fingers, you did something wrong, so go ahead and make sure. Also, it's a good point to look at the bushings or bearings depending on what gearbox you're doing. If they're all somewhat even across the top, that's a good sign. If you're if it's one sitting too low, you need to add more shims or check out see what's wrong. Go ahead and slide this back on. There we go. Okay, now since gearbox is closed, let me go ahead and put this in. Notice how the air cell nozzle, you can pull on it, it goes back and forth A okay. Let me slide this in. Okay. You're gonna come to this problem where you have too much spring, not enough room. So go ahead and use a flathead. And you just gotta, gotta pry it in there without bending and damaging the wire, the wire uh, spring. So you press on it, it is a very tight spring. Okay, now I got that. Let me go ahead and motor cage on. Also you have the motor set screw adjustment here little indicator here so you can slide motor back and forth depending on how high you need to set it. Okay now if I wanted to check the gun and make sure I have the gears and the piston all lined up I can test it right now. So what I'm gonna do is pull this out make sure it's not touching plug in the battery Make sure it's not touching, otherwise it'll startle you. Plug it in. Okay, now, with one hand, hold on here just so it doesn't jump. Another hand, basically have control. Okay. Okay, everything's good to go. It's working A-OK. -okay. You go ahead and unplug it. Put the battery aside. Now remember, it's working fine, but if you put a screw that's too long here or too long here, it's not going to work. So, mental note, the gun's working fine right now. Let me go ahead and put the rest of it together. So I at least have a benchmark, kind of like a checkpoint of how it's going together and if I'm doing everything right. So, here we go. Let me go ahead. There's the safety. Now the selector plate bracket, whatever you want to call it, goes around. The little oval goes around there. Groove goes up here. Trigger. Okay. Go ahead and put this. Drop this on. You notice you have the hole here. Screw hole. Or sorry, you have hole here. Screw hole here. The screw goes for here. And this pin is for here for the trigger to pivot on. And go ahead, pop that on. Now, if you notice, if you just drop it in right now, you're going to have this part hitting here. So you have to actually lift up, make sure you have it in the right spot. Otherwise, you're going to put it all together and you're not going to have a gun that works. Basically, now you can pull the trigger, and if you switch to safe, nothing. Switch off, okay, you can go. Put this together. Okay. Pull that forward. Okay. Trigger's good. Safety's good. Okay. Now, let me go ahead and attach this. Notice how you have a basically a rectangle with two little divots on either side. Matching side here. Flat goes on the bottom. Kind of wiggle it in place. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Go ahead and screw it down with the two small Phillips. Okay. Turn it. Okay. Good to go. It's nice and smooth. If you have to force it, then you're doing something wrong. Just want to be real nice and smooth. Okay. 
I'll get to it. Okay, go ahead and notice on the wire harness you have a pin here and a pin here and corresponding hole hole. So go ahead and drop those in and notice how it kind of held in place. It's not going to go anywhere. And also for the wires, uh oh, I got twisted. Okay, that'll be fine. Okay, go ahead and press it in like so. Now you have the cutoff lever. You have the pivot for the cutoff lever, the, the pivot, and then the actual hole where it goes through and hits the sector gear. Go ahead, drop that in. And you have the smaller area. You have to do this first, otherwise it's going to be too complicated unless you have like needle nose pliers and you're doing plain operation. Go ahead. Line it up like so. When you pull a trigger, it pushes this. Cutoff lever. Okay. And also notice everything is like a puzzle. It's all layered. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. So once you have it all lined up, go ahead and drop this down and do a simple test of press on. Like just press in the middle with your thumb. Okay, you can move the trigger back and forth, but this doesn't move because there's no spring. So go ahead and put in two long screws, long screw, short screw. Nice commercial. Okay, go ahead and tighten these down. Okay, now for the two little uh, springs. For these springs, they're kind of like the regular uh, AG spring rebuild kit. You can find like by Modify, Echo One, Systema. I think a couple other brands provide them. You can use the springs for the regular V2 or the V3 uh, trigger contact, like the sliding part. You have to actually cut them to make them a little shorter for this purpose. So careful, don't lose these. These are kind of difficult to make the springs. The cut them and then recoil them. So go ahead and attach. What I did is I attached on one side, and I'm just going to pull, drop down on the other side. So now pull a trigger, goes back and forth. Good to go. Now I just need to do the other one for the cutoff lever. What you want to do is switch to semi-auto mode. Pull it up manually. Put on the first hook. Put your finger on there so like if you pull it and it slips, you don't launch it off like a rubber band gun. Go ahead and pull down. Uh oh, oh. Okay. Don't be stubborn. People are watching. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold on to the cutoff lever and this back the spring so it doesn't go flying and I'm just gonna pull okay there we go okay I got it now so now I can adjust it's going back and forth it's good I'm gonna go ahead and double check and shoot it should be fine because it worked fine earlier go ahead and plug it in okay good to go so I have semi-auto, switch it to full auto. Okay, good to go. Notice the cutoff, I mean, sorry, notice the, the aerosol nozzle. It's moving back and forth, that's good. So I have the springs, spring, spring, and spring. Go ahead and unplug it, put it aside. Let me look on the table, make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, looks like I have everything here. Gearbox is put back together. Let me go ahead and drop it into the rest of the gun. Almost there. Now before you put it together, you need to take account of all the stuff you have on the table. Put the little fake bolt in first and notice how it fits and it slides. What I'm going to do is press it all the way forward. I'm going to grab a little charging handle. 
and notice how back here it's in a little groove and this part kind of holds in place with the combo of this so if I put, just hold it right now it's just going to kind of fall out so once I have the fake little bolt cover in put the gearbox in make sure that hop-up unit is wiggly and springy and I also drop the nozzle in first like so and then down in the back it kind of sits at a weird angle it looks like it's not sitting correctly but it's good to go okay so now I have gearbox in and the fake bolt let me line it up and make sure that it's basically working together okay now I'm gonna go ahead and take this part this is the upper part of the mag well let me slide it in okay that fell off don't worry now what I'm gonna do it's kind of it can work both ways sometimes you can press it on or what you can do is you lift up on the back make sure this lines up and then you kind of seesaw it in and okay see now it's in but now I have this part out since it's all loose and it's not really screwed down you have the ability to kind of reassemble and move everything around as you see fit so now if I pinch it like here and here I can move this and I don't see any gaps here so that's a good sign that means that it's basically held together I just have to put all the screws and the pins in and then I'll be good so I'm gonna do is the the first thing is I'm gonna put this pin in and this pin will basically hold it all together real quick okay got that in Okay. now see it came out don't worry that's because I have to put the other screws in but now I don't have to worry about everything else falling out if I move around so let me go ahead and put the screws in flat head here okay okay now it's much more secure now I have a little fake uh, bolt catch go ahead and drop this in one small Phillips and now the spring oh the bane of some people's ex existence here we go. What I do is I hold the gun kind of like a little tabletop, put the spring in place, try not to breathe too heavily, otherwise it'll fall out. See how the little hole matches with the spring? So I'm gonna go ahead and do is press down like so and hold it. Then slide this pin in. Okay, now I got it. Now you can press on it, and it's springy. Um, it looks nice, doesn't really do anything, but it's cool to have it. So go ahead and press that in. Now if this part does get loose, what you can do is you can scoot it out just a little, put a little Loctite, just a little puddle right here, push the, the pin in all the way, and then wipe the excess. So you have just a little surface area holding the pin in place or you can take it out and bend it just a smidge so instead of a straight line it's kind of curved so it's pressing up against here okay now slide this forward as much as you can now I'm going to insert the little bolt stop bar you have one screw one screw and then you have one in the middle for the main area and tighten that down okay, tighten down the front one now it's secure 
Okay, now for the little screw in the middle. Go ahead and put that in. Okay, now this part. You're probably wondering, how do I get this? Because I, I took it out. You want to do is slide it back. And basically, because you have the plastic hop up into here, you don't want to be running around, have someone shoot it. And it makes it, it fills in this gap. So basically, you press it in like so. Use a flathead. Press on this groove here. And press a little more. Come on. There you go. Basically, you want to get underneath that little lip there. So now it's basically you can't get it out now unless you take it all apart. And it makes it look nice and it protects your hop up unit. So now I'll go ahead and make sure this moves freely. Put the spring in. And then the spring guide. Pop that in place. Okay. Now, done. Let's go ahead and put the frame back on. Hold on to the end of the wire there. Pull another end of the wire. They're somewhat, they're not caught or anything. You can pull on, on either end. Make sure it's on full auto. That's bad. It's going to hit it and break it. Switch to full auto so it's all the way forward. Plug it in. Kind of hold with one hand. Scoot it back. Kind of pulling the wire so it doesn't get caught. Scoot it back a little more. Make sure not to pinch your fingers. Watch the front part. Make sure there you go. See how it's flush. Scoot it back. Flush. And it's able to just move back and forth. It's not getting caught or anything. You have plenty of slack in the wire. Okay, now notice the groove on here, the groove on here and here on either side. Slide it in like so. Press down, flush. Scoot this back. You notice it's going to be like it's too squished like so. It's actually supposed to be springy, so you have to kind of pull it or press on it kind of hard at a back angle to get it past this little bump and that's what holds it in place. So go ahead and just gently press and pull. Press here and pull here. There you go. And now it's good to go. So basically you can hold it like that. Oh. Go ahead and put the wires in stock for storage reasons or getting ready for the game. Charge handle. Oh yeah, side note, you don't need to slam this or rack it like a real gun. The spring is like maybe a one pound spring with like a two pound piece of metal. So when you slam it forward, just to look cool if you break it, you know, it's not the gun's fault. It's just made for looks. So hope this video is very helpful. If you have any other video suggestions, uh, go ahead, hit me up on Facebook. Look for me. My name's Brian Holt, H-O-L-T. You can find me playing airsoft most times, or you can find me on the Echo One Facebook page if you're not local. So go ahead and give me suggestions of what's the next video you want to see. I'm Brian from Echo One USA, and thanks for watching.